All right, welcome to Catholic Scripture Twisters episode such and such. This is actually another episode about Catholic comments. This is actually part five of Catholic comments. Before I actually get into the comments, I want to talk about common sense real quick. What is actually written down over what is said holds more sway, right? You imagine if somebody was saying, oh, this is what the, the Constitution means, and this is what it says, passed down through oral tradition. And then there's somebody who comes and says, oh, this is what's actually written down in the Constitution. And they actually show you the Constitution. And they contradict. Which one do you go with? Do you go with what the guy saying the oral tradition is, or do you go with what the actual Constitution says? You go with what the actual Constitution says. That's common sense. The same thing if they were saying a law. Oh, you go to abide by this law. It's passed down by oral tradition. Well, the oral tradition doesn't have any authority. It's not written down. That law has no authority. You're just making things up. Right? If it's not written down, there's no authority to that. So you're saying, oh, we have to obey this law. No, we don't. But then you see the law. Hey, we got it written down. This is the law that we have for such and such state, such and such city, you know, what have you. This is the law. Well, then, hey, we have it written down. We can use it. Hey, you broke this law. We, it's been established for 200, 500 years, and you broke it. All right? You actually got authority because it's written down. And, you know, it's common sense. You know, you got a contract. If you just got a verbal contract, you have to rely on the other individual that you're in a contract with to abide by what you orally agreed to. And a lot of people don't like that. So they always say, can I get that in writing? Because if you got it in writing, then you have something tangible. You got something for evidence. You got some proof. Be like, hey, we agreed to this. And you see, we both signed this. And this individual is not holding up to their end of the, the contract, their, their agreement. Right? What is written is the authority. What is written overrules tradition and what's passed down orally. This is common sense, right? And I, I, no one's going to argue with this unless they're Catholic and they want to defend what they believe, right? Because the Bible is basically, in this example, like the U.S. Declaration of Independence, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. If you didn't have that written down, you would not know what it says. People could just make it up. Oh, you don't really have a right to free speech. Oh, you don't really have a right to bear arms. You know, that's that's not what was really meant by uh, the founding fathers of the country, of the nation. But then you can actually go to the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and you can go, hey, wait, this is what it says. And what is written down has the authority, not what is passed down orally. Obviously, right? So the same thing with the Bible. We have it written down. So we can trust what the Bible says, not what was orally passed down, because what is orally passed down oftentimes twists things up that are biblical, adds things to it, removes things from the Bible, and just straight up contradicts the Bible. And when that, that happens, we have to stick to what is written. The same thing when the law starts getting away from the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. It starts twisting things up and just contradicting the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Well, you have to ignore all that tradition and all that oral law, and you have to go through by what is written, the written law there of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Right? It's common sense. You know, a child can understand this. But apparently Catholics cannot. They, they want to get away from what is written. Why? Well, so they can make up what they want, because if you're not going to go by what is actually written down, you can make up what you want. You can just change things. No one knows what was originally said, especially 2,000 years ago. If we didn't have anything written down, you could make up whatever you wanted. You can say Jesus said whatever, because there's no evidence. But then again, there's no reason to believe you. Right? If you went by oral tradition, 
you could come up with so many different denominations because you can just make up whatever you want. Now, there are different denominations because they take the Bible and they twist it like the Catholics do. But you have something there. It's a foundation, but it's being twisted. When you don't have this foundation, there's nothing to twist. You just make up what you want. You can build your own little foundation. You don't have to twist and change the foundation at all. Right? So I just needed to put that out there because this is basically the same conversation over and over. And sometimes it seems like it's word for word. But that's basically what this conversation has gotten into. Where I recently put up this video about Catholic Scripture Twisters, Episode 20, The Apostolic Succession. And uh, this fellow just changed his picture, but it's the same fellow here. I'm going to look at that top comment with the most replies momentarily. I thought there was another comment here. Maybe it was removed or for some reason it's not showing up. But I thought there was four comments kind of strange and of course it doesn't want to load now that I'm doing this video let me look three comments here that's strange I think I had the video up let me take a look I have it over right here I thought there was four that's strange why everything's acting up like this while I'm doing this One, two, three. Yeah, see, there's four. I think that might be the one that's missing. The man made doctrine. Just like Protestants hate man made doctrines, so and so on, so do Catholics. I was like, not true. Catholicism is full of man made doctrines. So that might be the one that's actually removed here. But anyway, let's take a look at uh, what is actually left up here. I'm assuming he deleted that comment. Because, you know, it is pretty silly what he said. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, this he says here, There's no salvation outside the body and bride of Christ. The church is one. And I can't argue with that at all. Uh, now, if he's trying to say that the Catholic Church is this church, then no. Because the body and bride of Christ is saved. Not every Catholic is saved. Not all Catholics agree. Not all Catholics agree with Vatican I, with Vatican II. They don't all agree with the Pope. Uh, I think this fellow I've been talking to says that the Pope is an anti-Pope. Right? So you got division within the Catholic Church. You just all call yourself Catholics even though you're still divided. It's just like Americans are all Americans even though they're divided. Right? Just because you call yourself the same name doesn't mean you're one. Right? The church is made up of believers. Uh, they're found in, among Catholics, Orthodox, and all the Protestant denominations, non-denominational, and even people who are not even going to any one of those kind of organizations. There's all kinds of believers all around the world. And those are the people who make up the church. Right? And that's basically what I tell them in the reply here. Uh, this one, <clears throat> uh, another silly thing Catholics like to say. Uh, it says here, the Bible tells us that, yes, there will be shaft and wheat, or tares, because wheat has shaft. But, uh, yeah, unless he's talking about when the wheat, all wheat has actually shaft, and you have to break the shaft off of the wheat. I think that's what he means, because ultimately it's wheat and tares, because wheat has shaft that has to be broken off from it. But uh, I'm just nitpicking. Uh, but anyway, you get to pay attention to detail sometime. Uh, anyway, uh, and the wolves will move in, but promises of that the Petron church will prevail against the gates of hell. There's no chance of salvation outside the body and bride of Christ, his church. Everyone in heaven is Catholic, whether you were on, were, were or not on earth. That doesn't make any sense. Everyone in heaven, 
I'm assuming he means everyone after Jesus because obviously there's Jews before him. There's the angels that are before them. So I'm not going to really bash on that, but I'm assuming he means everybody after Jesus, right? Um, that's a no. Obviously not. That's not true. But I have to clarify, what does he mean by the gates of hell prevailing, right? I says, what does it mean for the gates of hell to prevail against the church? That the gates of hell prevail against Israel. And he goes, is there still Israel? So what he's saying is, oh, if it still exists, the gates of hell haven't prevailed. That's basically what he's saying here. So I say, are Israel Israelis not going to hell just because they are Israelis? Right? So the question, which he's not going to answer, is basically telling him, well, just because you're an Israelite doesn't mean you're not going to hell, right? So just because you're a Catholic doesn't mean you're not going to hell, right? So what does it mean for the gates of hell to prevail? The gates of hell prevail mean they took over the leadership and they started teaching false doctrine and the traditions of man instead of the word of God. I would say that is the gates of hell prevailing. But I need to know what he thinks it means. Apparently he thinks it means if you still exist, then the gates of hell haven't prevailed. All right, so you can say that about any organization. It's still here. Well, the gates of hell haven't prevailed against the Lutherans or the Baptists or the Methodists because they're still here or against the Seventh-day Adventists. Or even against the Muslims, and even let's just say the Luciferians and the Satanists too, right? The gates of hell haven't prevailed because they still exist. So we need to define what that means of the gates of hell being prevailed, uh, actually prevailing, because then we can actually have a discussion on this. Because you, you know Catholics will always bring that up. The gates of hell will never prevail. Well, what does it mean for the gates of hell to prevail? If we actually talk about that, you, we can see that they've prevailed, especially with this current pope actually saying that Catholics and Muslims worship the same God and is actually supporting and helping Chrislam form where they have a united church of the House of Abraham in Dubai where it's combining Catholicism, Judaism, and Islam into one faith. <clears throat> uh, but up here is where we basically have the conversation of what I started the video on about the what is written compared to what is actually said right obviously what is written holds more way like if we come to a conversation that happened between two people and it's recorded right it's recorded on a tape recorder and we have uh, it written down, and they both sign what was said. And later on, somebody who's part of that conversation, let's say it's between two people, right? It's between me and this guy. We had a conversation. It's recorded, like these texts right here. It's recorded. This is a good example. We have in this conversation right here. And we can have this confefe here guy. He says... Oh, I'm saying this, that, and the other thing, right? And that I said that to him in the comments, right? Do we believe what he said? Or do we believe what I said when I go, no, what I said is I'm claiming the word of God who is the vine and not the uh, denomination, right? Like he says, I'm clinging to the vine. I'm, I mean, I'm not clinging to the vine. I'm clinging to men. I say, no, I'm clinging to the word of God who is divine and not a denomination, right? Because what he's doing is he's clinging to the Catholic Church. He's not clinging to God. He's not clinging to Jesus. He's clinging to a denomination, right? And we have it sitting here, right here. We can see what each other said. This is what actually holds sway. Because if we both went away and this fella wants to say that, oh, this is what I'm doing. No, this is what I actually said, right? We have it written. We have it recorded. Everybody can come see this. This is the actual evidence. This is what we would put up in court. Right? <clears throat> Even when you do something like an edit, let me just do an edit real quick. 
and just put here edit All right and I think it see it tells you it's edited and I think you can click on that whoops my bad I thought it would tell you what is actually said but uh, I think you can actually look at the YouTube stuff and they can show you what is edited I know on uh, other times I've done it it showed what was changed and a lot of times if somebody messed up in a spelling or grammar and they went and fixed it you know I do the same thing but anyway let's continue with this little conversation here uh, he goes on to say the word of God was an originally oral originally oral no originally it was Moses who was told to write it down even the letters of the apostles authors are anonymous Jesus didn't give authority to a book nor ask for anything to be compiled Jesus Christ is the word in flesh Jesus Christ is divine but Jesus Christ is not a book that didn't exist till 383 AD the word of God was a uh, originally was written as it was given to Moses and told to write it down that it may be a witness God already gave authority to a book, and Jesus recognized his authority and obeyed it, used it to fend off Satan, told us we... I messed up there. See, this needs to be it. We are need to live off of it. Without it, we would not know Jesus and who he was and what he was doing. The book existed. The Old Testament existed, and the writings of the New Testament existed. They don't have to be compiled into one book to exist. Without the Bible... You cannot even attempt to give any kind of authority to the Catholic Church as oral tradition has no authority. Right? Because if we want to go by oral authority, I can say, well, oral authority passed down saying that, uh, you know, my whole family line is the, the head of the church. And I'm the last of my family line, so I'm the head of the church. So, you know, suck on that, right? Uh, we continue on here. The Old Testament is not the Bible. The Ten Commandments are not the Bible. Oh, you want to talk about, oh, the Bible is the compiled books that are inspired. Okay, I'm not going to argue with there. You, you know, he's playing little games here, which just shows, you know, the mindset of these people. Because the Old Testament is the inspired word of God. The traditions are not. The tradition came first. See how it's repetition? He was saying traditions came first. It's like, no. The traditions come from what was written, such as Moses giving the feast days and the sacrificial law and the judgments and the Ten Commandments. All of that is the traditions come from what is written, not from what is oral. Right? And he's like, and you see, you know, acting like a trial. Traditions win. Jesus told us stuff, but never wrote it down. He sent men to make uh, more until he comes back. He's, see, this is the kind of thing that they'll say. Jesus told us stuff, but it was never written. You can't say that's not true. But you can't go, oh, well, Jesus said things that aren't written down, so now I'm going to go make up what he said. You can't go do that. And you're not, you can't bring up something and go, hey, Jesus said this, that, and the other thing, and it contradicts what he actually said in the Bible. That's common sense, right? It's kind of like saying about the Constitution. Oh, there's stuff that the early church, uh, I mean, the early, not the, <laughs> I'm mixing the early church fathers up with the, the founding fathers. The founding fathers said things that are not written in the Constitution. Yeah, so, what's your point? Do you, you think they went and they were teaching things contradicting the Constitution and the Bill of Rights? You can You can try to bring that kind of stuff up, but there's two things to say to that. One is either it's forgery, it's it's BS, or they fell away from what the Constitution and Bill of Rights said. Either way, you stick to what is written, the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, not what comes after when they change their mind or when something comes up where they obviously contradict it, right? I mean, it makes sense, but you can talk to these guys about common sense to you, you know, blue in the face. It, it seems to do no good. But, you know, you do these kind of things to plant seeds, not just for them, but for other people. And you don't know, you know, when this might take seed, I mean, take root in this guy. 
right? He, he keeps wanting to engage, so as long as things are relatively civil, you know, I'll put up with it. Uh, but, you know, it's more common sense here. If, you know, if it wasn't written down, you would know nothing of Jesus. What was orally passed down by inspired men was written down so we would know what they taught because oral tradition change as they pass down but what is written stays the same and that's common sense again we can look at the constitution and we can make copies of it and no one's going to doubt the copies because we can look at the original so we can make tons of copies where you can find copies of the declaration of independence and constitution and bill of rights and sometimes you get them you know in your little book you can have a little book that has all three of them in it and no one's going to say oh this is a copy so you know we can't rely on it you can look at the originals and the originals are preserved. And you can say, oh, yeah, this lines up with the original. So everybody has a copy of what was originally said. Right. So there's no reason to doubt that little pamphlet you got that has the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights written there. Right. So there's no reason to doubt the copies that we have where we put together the Bible either. Because they had the original to compare it all to. They knew they had the copies. So, yeah, there's no reason to doubt that. But when you're going to go by oral, you have nothing. You're like, yeah, that's what they said. Like, I can make up what he said, and he can make up what I said. We have, If we have nothing written here, we can just make it up. We can lie about one another. We can twist what each other, what each other said all we want because we have nothing written down here. Uh, and then he goes, that's what Pope Damasus said, that why, that's why he called the Council of Rome to compile the first Bible under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to have 73 books. And I just want to show you where the conversation started and where it is now. You see, he's like, you're clinging to men and not the vine. And here he is, not clinging to the actual word, but to um, a man here, Damasus here. He claims he's inspired. But there's no reason to be, believe that, right? Um, I've already talked about this kind of stuff before. All these books, except for the seven apocrypha books of the Old Testament, which he's adding in there, were already considered inspired. Uh, so, yeah, you can't take what is not inspired and then say, oh, these books are now inspired. That's not how it works. You know, they're either inspired or they're not. But, you know, I try to get him to focus on this. I said, so you agree that what is written overrules what is claimed to have been said by oral tradition? Because that's the point of these three comments here. Oral changes. What is written stays the same. So he's like, yeah, that's why we need the Bible. I was like, oh, so you agree. The Bible overrules what is oral tradition. And then he tries to come back. Well, they point to each other. What are you talking about? What are you talking about here? He was like, uh, no, they don't. They often contradict one another. And that's where I bring up what is brought up in this same video that I'm commenting on, Mark 7, verses 1 through 13, about tradition and how Jesus says to follow the word of God over tradition. And the word of God is what Moses said here. For Moses said, and that is, he's saying Moses said is the commandment of God, is the word of God. So we know the Old Testament, what Moses wrote, is the word of God, right? We're to go with the word of God over tradition when they contradict, right? Uh, so he says over here that 2 Thessalonians 2.15, So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. I see there's a new comment here, so we'll check that out too. And he goes on to say, what passed by word of mouth would not contradict what is written down. That is common sense. What was written has never changed, but what has been said, has, uh, said, uh, I meant what has obviously been changed, but I put as. So he just commented here. He says, there's nothing in apostolic tradition that contradicts the Bible we compiled. And without an example, you definitely sound like you don't know what you're talking about. Mary's mom is named Annie the sign of the cross, the good thief's name, etc. Uh, and I have a whole series here where I've shown many examples. One is where you bring up Mary here. The Catholics say through their tradition that Mary is a perpetual virgin and that she's sinless. When the Bible talks about her 
consummating the marriage with her husband Joseph, or else they weren't ever really married, that she had children after Jesus, that Jesus was her firstborn son, and that she was a sinner calling God her savior and offering up two turtle doves as a sin offering. Right? That contra what is written contradicts the what this guy's calling the apostle tradition. Right? So I have a, just an example right there in what he said. Right? So uh yeah. I'll, I'll just uh, quickly reply to this. Uh, I guess I'll leave it in the video. So you'll see it here and be like, right. check it out if you feel like it. So, yeah, that is that. Thanks for watching and take care.